Hello, welcome to Pushing Boundaries, Living Supernaturally. I'm your host, Tony Myers. This podcast is about taking Jesus outside the four walls of the church and into your daily life, specifically when it comes to healing for yourself. You are a brand new creation. You are a spiritual being in Christ. You are born again in spirit. Therefore, the supernatural is by inheritance yours. You are co-inheritors with Christ. And then once you realize that healing is already yours, then you can give it away to others. This is walking in God's kingdom. This is the supernatural lifestyle that Christ walked. And you can too, with just a few tweaks in your perception, you can walk in God's kingdom now. As a young kid, I was led to believe that God took lives it was part of why I became an atheist. That God took lives. That God used death to punish. I was about 10 years old when I had two friends involved in a car accident. The one I had just got in a fight with just hours before he died. Everyone all around us was saying that God needed another angel and that God took him home. And what do we often say? Oh, I'm ready to go home. I'm ready to die. So today's teaching is going to show that God, the loving Heavenly Father, has nothing to do with using death. It's his will that none should perish. We need to stop teaching that God has some alliance with death. He does not. Death is an enemy which is now defeated. So that is the topic for today where I'm going to show you that death is indeed an enemy and that is defeated and it is now our choice. In Christ... All were appointed once to die. We died at the cross. That's the one appointed time to die. <laughs> so let's talk about this today. First of all, we think that death is a release. We think that's an absolute in order to reach heaven, death is the portal. That is a lie. Christ is the portal. <laughs> God did not create death. And first of all, so let me sell this right now. James 117. totally disproves that God has anything to do with death to begin with. Okay? <laughs> Whatever's a good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from God our Father, who created all the lights in the heavens. He never changes or casts a shifting shadow he chose to give birth to us by giving us his true word. And we, out of all creation, became his prized possession. So, first of all, 
Anything that comes from God is good and perfect. It's a gift. He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. That means that he has nothing to do with death. He is the father of life. How did death come into this world? 1 Corinthians 15, 21. For since by man came death. Okay. It was men. We brought death. So therefore, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. By one man, actually, and that would be the Lord. Now, let's go to 1 Corinthians 15, 26. That states it irrevocably. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Right there, what's it saying? Death is an enemy. God has nothing to do with it. In fact, God made this statement, choose this day, life or death. So whose choice is it? Ours. Death is not a friend. In today's world, we have hospice. That's, they call it, uh, They use hospice to ease the transition. It's murder. We align every, you know, preachers preach about death as if it's a friend. We talk about death as if, it, as if it's a friend. I can't wait till I get to heaven, till I die and get to heaven. I'm ready to go home, meaning I'm ready to die. That is not God's will. It is so huge to recognize That God has nothing to do with death. He does not cause anyone to die. That is not a decree that he goes out and uses as a punishment. He has nothing to do with death. 1 Corinthians 15, 55. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where's thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. And so it, it is time to become clear that God does not make any alliances with death he does not partner with death. He is the loving Heavenly Father who only distributes life. It is man, for since by man came death, that partners with death. And shame on us. John 5, 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. God is all about life. And this does lead up to 
That is why Everlasting life, eternity, starts now. And we can have eternal life and never die. Proof of this is Enoch and Elijah. They never died. You do not have to. Death is not the portal to heaven. Indeed, heaven is within us. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my say saying, he shall never see death. That was Jesus. It's in John 8, 51. That was even before the cross. He wasn't speaking abstractly. He was speaking about death. It was saying that we do not have to die. Romans 6, 9. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death had no more dominion over him. As Paul states, so we died on the cross in Christ as, as we share in his resurrection as well. To eternal life. The problem is we live in the functional truth that says that all men, two things that all men go through, taxes and death. No, we do not have to die. Death is an enemy. When you do a deep study of this, you will find that, okay, who comes to steal, kill, and destroy? No, it ain't Satan. It was the Pharisees, John 10, 1. Nowhere within the New Testament Does it say God welcomes death? God causes people to die? It's not there. I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So the reason why we still experience death is because we live in the functional truth based upon our wrong beliefs that everyone has to die. And so that's the functional truth. That's what we see because that's what we believe. So part of this teaching is twofold. One, to prove God has nothing to do with death. Why are we all the time blaming God when somebody dies? That in itself has created many atheists. It's time we put a stop to it. And then secondly... To prove that death is a choice and we can have eternal life starting now. And instead of dying to get to heaven, we are simply like Enoch or Elijah 
and we're here no more on this physical world. But in order to do that, first we have to come and embrace the truth, the spiritual truth, not the functional truth. And that's why we're talking about it. So that one, we finally understand God has nothing to do with death. If your mother, your father, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your husband, your wife has passed away, it is not God's fault. He had nothing to do with it and he has everything to do with life. And it was his will that your loved one live. But whose choice is that? It is our choice based upon our beliefs. How did, how did death even come to this earth? God did not create it. God created our bodies to live forever. Death came as a result of man. By man came death. 1 Corinthians 15, 21. So death has been destroyed. But now we have to believe that and come out from the functional truth, which is a lie, but it's a lie that is wrongly believed. So that's the truth that we walk out because we believe it. This is where our beliefs are crucial. All creation is awaiting the manifestation of the sons of God. It is when we rise up, then and live out the truth, that's where these things will become obvious. But first we have to recognize the truth and then believe it. Religion has kept this stuff alive. And pointing the finger at God and saying he allows it. And even saying that he partners with death to bring people to heaven. No, he doesn't. I want you to meditate on this. Ponder it. Look up more verses. There's plenty of verses. And come to the conclusion. God has nothing to do with death. He made sure through Christ that it was defeated once and for all time, there is no more sting of death once we start believing that. Death is not in God's nature, just as, once again, we got James. He never changes. He has never partnered with death. He has always given life. And now I know you will run right to the Old Testament and bring out verses which I have explained before. Those verses were blaming God. We still blame God. Because that's what they believed. 
So let's correct that. God had nothing to do with it. He is incapable of it. Be blessed. Be healed. And be a blessing. Thank you for listening to this episode of Pushing Boundaries. Please feel free to email for direct prayer, for topic suggestions, to email me at TonyJustBelieves at gmail.com. Also visit my website, TonyBelieves.com, if you wish to partner with me so that I can continue to create these podcasts, then there, there's a donation button on my website as well. Thank you for partnering with me. It is my heart to see every person healed, living in the co-inheritance that Jesus Christ procured for us. Be blessed, be healed, and be a blessing.